Fellow guitarists, hello there. Thank you for tuning in. My name's Josh Rogers and welcome to MBM Guitar. Uh, it's a beautiful Tuesday afternoon here in New Zealand. And uh, as some of you may know, I ran a poll, I think it's called a poll, uh, to see what you guys might like me to cover. And it was really clear, it was tremolo was the thing, uh, the choice that most people made. So thank you for tuning in, and I hope that you get something out of this lesson. So the way we're going to run it is I'm just going to kind of go through some things. It's mainly mental more so than, than physical, actually. That's my belief to playing a good tremolo. Um, and then, of course, you know, there's a live chat running, so feel free to just jump in there with any questions, and I'll, uh, I'll do my best to sort of maintain the lesson and also... Um, address any questions that you may have. Um, well, I'm at it, please like and, and subscribe to my channel. Uh, it helps me out a lot, uh, especially in these strange times that we're all going through. Uh, yeah, so any stupid comments, like the one that's just come through, dude, I'll just block you because that's ridiculous. So uh, my advice to you is to get off the channel. Actually, I'll just block you anyway. Hey there, Julio. How's it going? Get lost, man. Don't need you type of uh, people here. So I'll report you as well. Sorry, people. How annoying having to deal with someone like that right from the beginning. Uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, getting back to where I was. Uh, yeah, welcome to everybody. Julio, Jesse, hey, how's it going? So let's talk about tremolo. Uh, I'm sure you wouldn't be here unless you knew, so I'm not really going to say what it is. But uh, most of the difficulties people have, of course, is playing tremolo and, and making it sound good. I think one of the best tips that I can give you uh, is... It's more here in your ear. Um, a lot of people think, you know, I've, I've just got to race through tremolo. The faster I can do it, the better it's going to be. But actually, uh, that's only true to a certain extent. One of the things to really focus on is how smooth it sounds. So smoothness for tremolo comes in two ways. It comes with a nice even tone and volume across all four notes. So it's, you know, it's in groups of four or Standard classical tremolo is anyway, it's in a group of four. Thumb, annular, middle, index, like that. It's like a little wave. Um, so what you want to aim for is a nice, even volume between each of those four notes. So you don't want this sort of thing happening, really. See there, I was just making certain notes and that sound loud. So what you're really aiming for is a nice even volume. And that even volume will make your tremolo sound a lot more even. So you're sort of going for a... So you, you don't need to look at your fingers. You want to let your ear be your teacher, be your guide.
Okay, so a big tip. Listen. There's no need to look at your fingers. Listen. Listen for a nice... In New Zealand, when the when you call someone and they uh, they're talking on the phone to somebody else, it, it sounds like that. It's an engaged signal, and it's just so. If you can do that, you're halfway there. Okay. And the next thing is to make sure that your tremolo is an equal distance apart. Uh, each note in your tremolo is equidistant from the other in terms of time. So you don't want to sort of have something like this, let's say we're, we're doing our tremolo and it sounds a bit lopsided, it sounds a bit like this. That's really common too. Uh, the notes aren't happening at equal intervals from one another. So you might be rushing something like or okay. I'm not gonna put up the notation. You just use your ear. So the two main things, you're trying to make it sound even, so even volume across the four notes, and an even distance apart from one another. So if we look at uh, the most famous one of all, it's the Recuerdos de la Alhambra by Francisco Tarek. Uh, that is the piece that I think has sort of cemented the beauty of tremolo in all of our minds. It's that piece, Recuerdos de la Alhambra. So if, if we're going through that, uh, we can just do it with open strings. So let's just take the major section, this part. So we'll try it without any uh, any chord. So there, if I if I play it a little bit slower, I'm trying for to make all the notes sound identical. If I did it on one string. Don't get hung up on the thumb being different from the other fingers. Uh, it is a finger, even though we call it a thumb. It's it's a finger. So think of them all as four fingers, not three fingers plus your thumb. So you're trying to make all of those nice and even. Once again. Listen, you want all of those four notes to be coming out uh, constantly and nice and even. Uh, if we're going to look at some techniques that you can use. Jade, hello. Uh, yeah, so if, you, if you're looking at some techniques that you can use, uh, one of the best books, actually, I've, I should have brought this up before, is this one. So hey, check this one out. I hope you can see that the right way around. I'm seeing it in reverse, but I'm sure you guys have seen it correctly. It's called Pumping Nylon uh, by Scott Tennant. Uh, there's actually a link to this book uh, in the description below. And if you do purchase it through that link, I get a little bit of a kickback because it's an Amazon affiliate link. Uh, there's a whole section to tremolo, actually, because it's one of the techniques that most people want to learn, but they always think that it's tough. And uh, of course, nothing so tough that you can't break it down and uh, get get to it slowly. So one of his biggest things is staccato. If you don't know what staccato means, it just means short and detached. So instead of notes going like, he suggests playing it like this. I'll just change the camera angle so you can see my fingers a bit better. So what I'm doing, 
I'm playing and then I'm immediately putting my next finger on. See that? There. It goes straight on. Then you can combine that. Hey, Josh, Donald, Alejandro, Alan, welcome. Welcome, everybody. It's so cool to have everyone, uh, everyone turning up. So, yeah, we're going to try the tremolo, staccato. And then we're going to do something at the end, which I don't know if you're familiar with it or not. It's called a speed burst. And so we're going to play a whole bunch of quavers. If you don't know what a quaver is, don't worry about it. It just... It just means we're going to be going like this. And then we're going to go. We're going to do time. So it'll be sort of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one D and D, two D and D, like that. Yep, Ellen, it's the opposite of legato. That's true. Legato means smooth, sort of flowing into each other, and staccato is the opposite. It's cut off. The notes are cut off. Uh, it can be an any time signature. Any time signature at all. Uh, yeah, so we're going to go staccato. And what you can do is gradually uh, make one bar entirely speed burst. So we could be doing one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then the next time round, it could be one, two, three, four, one, two, four. Okay, <laughs> yeah, look, uh, I've been playing for ages, man. Uh, for those of you out there that are saying uh, it's not as easy as I'm making it look. Um, yeah, like, I'm not here to tell you that it is easy. Uh, make no mistake, tremolo is one of the tough things. Like, all guitarists are usually working on it at some point. You know, even the really good guitarists, uh, they're all trying something. You know, they're, they're always working on the tremolo for some reason. Or even scales, we're always working on stuff constantly. Uh, we're just at varying, various stages. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yes, that is a guitar in the background. Have a look there. That's, uh, I use it for some of the acoustic guitar stuff that I do. And it's a Tucker Mini uh, TNV 460SC, for those of you that are interested. Yeah, so the uh, tremolo, uh, like a lot of it is mind and your ear. That's one of the best teachers you can have. Listen, most people are fixated on their fingers. They're sort of, because it kind of looks fascinating too, you know, see your fingers working like that. And we're not really listening, you know, just sort of, uh, uh, you know, we're trying to force it out and make our, our hands do all the work or our fingers do all the work, but listen. That's going to be your best teacher for a tremolo. All the best tremolos are the most even tremolos. It's not necessarily the ones that are going you know, 150 BPM or something like that. It's the people that have got that smooth, beautiful uh, delivery, that nice, warm, even sound. You know, you're not getting a did 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 that sort of thing, and it's all even. Okay, so that's what we're aiming for. Uh, uh, as far as the hand is concerned, uh, like I said before, the thumb, just treat it like one of your fingers. Don't think it's thumb, one, two, three, thumb, one, two, three. Don't do that. Think of it more like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. My thumb is just another finger. A 
it's almost like zen you know like some type of meditation or something you just and uh i know this is easier said than done but you've got to try to relax when you're doing your tremolo i know it's easy to tense up and like, uh, I'm force my way through this tremolo but the idea is just to keep your fingers flowing man it's like a wave Oh, so cool to see everybody. I'm sorry I'm not really typing. Uh, I'm just trying to sort of give you guys examples on, on this. Uh, so I do have another tremolo study out there. Uh, it's actually on the channel. It's issue number seven, Opus 60 by uh, Karakasi. Well worth checking out because it's not just tremolo. It's sort of, it's tremolo plus some um, just other picking patterns and stuff. And that's a beautiful, beautiful etude to get into a tremolo technique. Well, I think it is. Uh, yeah, so check that out on my channel. I might come back in the video later and put a little link. But you can just search Etude number 7 over 60 Karakasi. And uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. Really, really good uh, Etude. Uh, the thing with Recuerdos, Ella, uh, Recuerdos is that it, it puts a lot of pressure on you to make it sound like all the hundreds of recordings that most of you have probably listened to. That's the problem with that one. Because you're going to jump on there and you're going to be like, oh, yeah, I can sound just like John Williams. And, and and then you're not. And you're going to be disappointed. Uh, whereas with the etude, I bet most of you have probably never heard of etude number seven uh, by Carcassi. Uh, and so the, that pressure to make it sound like John Williams, like Anna Vidovich or any of the notable players uh, now and in the past, and you'll have that hang up, you know, you'll be like, oh, man, they made it sound so cool. Why does mine suck? Yeah, so try that one, the etude number seven. Oh, great to see all you guys too. I see a few familiar people back. Neil, how's it, man? Uh, who else we got there? Injahith, good morning, good morning. It's the afternoon here, but I'm assuming where you are, it's the morning. Uh, Eric, hey, Eric, dude, how are you, man? Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad. Ellen. I found you from Moonlight Sonata guitar cover. Oh, cool. I was in Africa when I filmed that one. Yeah, tough. It's quite hard to get through that piece. It's sort of slowish, but whew, there's some challenges there. Jesse, do I use a lot of metronome work while doing this? Uh, I used to. Yeah, I used to, but I, I don't anymore. <laughs> so uh, with regards to using a metronome, for Recuerdos de Alhambra, of course, just set it at a nice, comfortable speed. In Jahith, no, I haven't, man. I love Chid Atkins. I was watching him just the other day. Um, I really love him playing Mr. Sandman. Yeah, I just love that. It's so cool. An amazing player. <clears throat> the Pumping Nylon. Let's have a look. So I'm going to quote a couple of passages from here. Scott Tennant, if you don't know who he is, check him out. Uh, he's one of the members of the LA Guitar Quartet. I think he's done a master class with Andre Segovia. Yeah, he's that level, uh, the top of the top. Beautiful interpretation style. So, yeah, he sort of, well, I kind of repeat what he says, actually, in, in what I'm doing. Think of your thumb as just another finger. So that's really important. Think of your thumb like it's one of these. Don't think it's separate. Uh, what else does it say? Play at a slow tempo, of course. Uh, and I'm going to add something on. Try not to be frustrated. Uh, yeah, easier said than done, like most things. Uh, the tremolo is one of those techniques that uh, it just doesn't let up. It's the nature of that technique. You've just got to have it firing as soon as it starts going off. It's awful. 
it's uh, you know it's sort of different from you've got a like a passage in a, in a piece or something like that and you can cover that if you miss a few notes you know you can sort of get back on course but tremolo because it's so constant any gap in it it just sticks out so badly and uh, i think that's what leads to a lot of people's frustration so one of the things there if we just did a little exercise i'm going to show you a proper exercise now and we'll do it staccato so we're gonna do uh, one note like that on one string and then our thumb's going to move to the next string and then back to the first string and we're going to alternate all the way to the sixth so we're going to be going sort of one and then two one three one four one five one six one like this okay so i'll do it in slow-mo Okay, so that's no rest stroke on thumb, no rest stroke, free stroke. No rest stroke on the thumb. <clears throat> if you're going to do rest stroke on the thumb, then you should probably do rest stroke on all the others too. Stroke everything. Uh, another thing to do, technically, try to keep your hand quite steady. So you don't want to kind of be pulling your hand out of position. Staying really still. I'll try to turn around. And see. Can everyone see that? My my hand is so still. Doesn't move, even uh, when my thumb's moving. So here's a little, another little tip. Uh, just move from here. I'll go this way. See there? That's where your movement should be coming. Like that. Uh, don't sort of, uh, I'm going to really exaggerate here. No one plays like this, but, but try not to do this sort of thing. You know, like moving your thumb around, uh, sorry, moving your whole hand to accommodate your thumb. Your thumb should be quite independent. You know, it should be able to do this kind of thing relatively easily. Okay, so keep your hand steady. Make your thumb do all the moving from here. Like that, see? Not, I'm not sort of, I'm not doing this. It's all from this joint here. Like that. This sort of thing. Uh, Max, good question. He's, uh, Max is asking if, if I should have my hand more perpendicular like this. You know, like the Tarega shot that's on the thumbnail of this video? Or quite often when we see Tarega playing the guitar, 
you can see he's like this. His thumb is super out like that. And his fingers are perpendicular or like 90 degree angle to the strings. Like this. I, I used to play like that. And uh, when I went to university and when I had subsequent lessons, I was told to play more like this. And the reason is it just naturally seems to produce a, a, a kind of rounder, fatter sound. And, it, and it's a bit more natural, you know, because you're, your whole wrist here, kind of see how it's in line. It's as soon as you start putting angles in it like that, or like that, it becomes a bit weird to play. Uh, and so, um, I don't do this style anymore. Although uh, it, it's really, it's quite nice because your your thumb always feels like it's never going to hit down here. Uh, it's a bit tricky for me to play like that. Yeah, so I have my hand more like this now. In the, it's more of a modern position. John Williams, Julian Bream, if you have a look at the way they play, they're, they're more old school. They're like kind of Tarega, Lobe, that, that type of position where your fingers were at 90 degrees and your thumb was right out ahead. But now you watch most players, they're like this. Yeah, so uh, I hope you all got that. So that's how I play. I sort of, I'm, I'm more on that angle. So I, I'm not crashing or anything onto my fingers. Um, yeah, so uh, another thing, although it's 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 not to do with the, the tremolo, but I I know for a fact most of you are here because you want to play the Cuerdos de la Alhambra smooth. Am I right? I'm, I'm sure I am. There's hardly any other tremolo pieces that people know. Uh, yeah, so if we're having a look at, at the uh, some of the chords in there, make sure if you're trying to go through the Cuerdos de la Alhambra, that this hand is completely taken care of. You should know all the chords without really having to think about them because you're going to be focusing here, right? So you should almost not even have to look here. So make sure that you can do the left hand without a struggle. If you struggle somewhere in the left hand, uh, even anywhere, I don't know if it's even worth attempting this piece. You should have, you should be able to do the left hand without even thinking about it. Because the last thing you need is like, oh my goodness, where's the chord? Where's the chord? Oh no. That horrible chords coming up and I can't even play it. So how are you ever going to make the, the tr what's the point of even having the tremolo running? If you can't do the left hand in the Cuerdos de la Alhambra. Uh, this isn't really meant to be a, a lesson in the Cuerdos de la Alhambra, but there are a couple of alternate uh, chord uh, placements. So they're in the first, in this section. We go to the C major, just here. So here's the first one, here. That's how I play it, I go here. But some people do this. There, right. there. Both is uh, are fine. 
but you can do this too. Some people do it like this. I do it like this. I think uh, it's kind of up to you. I can see why this this way is cool coming up because it keeps it on the same string. Uh, what I mean by keeps it on the same string, I mean the melody. So you've got this. Just while we're at it, remember the the tremolo is holding the melody. That's the melody. Da, 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 da. So that's what we're trying to bring out in that tremolo. So here, if we do it like that, or we could do the bar there for the G, or we could do open G. It keeps that melody note on the same string, which kind of helps keep the tone or the overall sound of the melody note the same. If we switch it to here, of course it sounds a little bit different than this, because it's a different string. And it's pretty hard to control the tone um, from string to string when you're doing tremolo. It's a bit easier with single notes, but with the tremolo it's a bit harder. So yeah, we've got those alternate ways of doing it. So we've got or 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 there's so many ways you could do it. You could do you could sort of chop between them. You do it like that. Uh, there might be some... Oh, here we go here. Max Hassaj, in varias una lemonza por el amor de Dios, the tremolo goes into the second string. Any tips for not catching on the first string? Uh, good question. I don't actually play that piece, but I, you know, I'm, I'm really familiar with it. Uh, yeah, but I've never played it. But I can just use this one as an example. The Buenos is, is perfect. Well, the Etude Number no. Seven by Carcassi that I mentioned earlier. There's a lot of string crossing. String crossing just means going from one string to another. It's just a fancy term for going from one string to the next. And the Quedos has it as well. Uh, so we can look at a... Oh, yeah, so here's the section where you can come across that in the Quedos. There. So. If you're playing it the... The way that I just mentioned by going up here. It's the first place that you change the, the tremolo from the second string to the first. Yeah. So the way that you can do it, or the way I do it, I shift my hand a little bit. Uh, it's almost imperceptible. So there, oh sorry, can you see, I, my hand came up a little bit, I'll do that again, I'll try to do it in slow-mo. Did you catch that mix? Even I saw it then in the camera. Yeah. Just um, maybe try doing a lot of tremolo on the second string. 
If you really think about it, it's no different to the first string. Yeah, that, that's all on the second string. You should be able to go to the third too. Even in, uh, actually, if you if you guys are studying the Quedos, this is a really good passage to, to nail. Sorry. You know, that's at the end of uh, the first time you run through the major, when it's gone to the tonic major. I think it's after the... Yeah, it is. So it's after that. So we did, we're here. That's really, really good to practice because actually in, in that little bar, it goes across three strings, the tremolos. So we do it like this. When you're getting really good at your tremolo, you can even start uh, using dynamics, and then you can sort of do that so often. Dodo Guitar, hi from Bali. Hello, Apakaba, Suksumon. Uh, you are welcome. You are welcome. I lived in Bali for Satu Dua Tigatahun. Apakabar, yeah, bike, bagus. Josh, hey, how's it, man? Uh, how long did it take to nail the tri Nice pun. Nail. Uh, probably, ugh, mate, to be honest, it's a work in progress. It's a work in progress. Yeah, I'm always working on my trillo, man. I, I'm sort of sometimes I think, yeah, man, it's flying. You know, my trillo sounds cool. And then other times I get on, I think, oh. uh, That's me, man. I don't know if other guitarists sort of go through that, but. I do. Sometimes I think, yes, nailed it. Other times, nah. Uh, yeah, so it's like a work in progress, but I, I think when I, I was about 18, when I first encountered the tremolo technique, uh, a guy called William Feasley. Anybody listening? He's a brilliant guitar player. I hope he's still alive. He came to play at our high school here in uh, New Zealand. And I, I was into classical guitar, but I'd never heard tremolo. And he played the Kredos, and I was just, what? Like most people out there, I was like, what is that? I was looking at his fingers, I couldn't tell what he was doing. And I went to my music teacher afterwards, Miss, Miss, can you get me the book that's got the, the Kredos de la Alhambra? I went up to William afterwards, and he told me what the piece was called, and it sort of showed me a bit of what it was. And uh, yeah, I was fascinated by it, and my music teacher was amazing. And she found a book for me that had the Quedos in it. And I just sat down and I just worked on it and worked on it. Uh, I think by the time I was 19 or 20, I kind of had it pretty good. Um, yeah, yeah, probably pretty good. Maybe 
not long to get it down, you know, like to understand what was required of me to have a nice tremolo. But to sort of get it to the point where I thought maybe I could could play, yeah, Feasley, that's it. William Feasley. I'll, I'll type his name in. William Feasley. I hope he's still playing. I hope he's all right. It was a long, long time ago. Uh, yeah, so, I don't know. I'd say a few months and a lifetime. And that's probably no help at all. Oh, cheers, bro. Oh, by the way, New Zealand's come out of lockdown a wee bit. We've gone from level four to level three, so I'm going to go and get me that coffee. <laughs> Yeah, so what else can we talk about? Make sure you're relaxing. See there, I'm I'm so relaxed, man. You'd never believe it. You can do it all day. Yeah, that's that's how you should be feeling when you're doing a tremolo. Just do it all day. So, you know, it's actually we do this kind of thing naturally. You know, we're always, you know, we do that kind of thing. So there is a natural thing to it. It's just a matter of controlling it in such a small and pre uh, precise area. Samael, dude, Bolivia. What? I think you're the first person from Bolivia. Oh, I think. Uh, we were getting a lot of people from Brazil on some of my other live streams. Chile, Argentina, but Bolivia? Yeah, man. I don't know what to say. Hola, como estas? What else we got going there? Yep, any questions you got? Oh, let's talk about nails. Yeah, man, how could I forget? So, nails. Everyone's got their own... Uh, way of shaping their nails so if if your nails aren't in good nick your tremolo is going to be shocking probably you got to have your nails under control so i'll give you a little i'll give you a little bit of a close-up of mine oh Oh, excuse me. <coughs> it's not COVID. Uh, yeah, so keep your uh, nails at a at a at a nice length for you. Uh, I shape mine that way, so it's flat along. I don't mean like flat, but it's a like a straight line across here. So the string jumps on my finger there, and then I control it there, and then it releases off the end. So you've got to have your nails, uh, yeah, under control and nicely shaped. Otherwise, your, your tremolo will sound horrible, even if you're moving your fingers properly. I use my nails, yeah, absolutely. Sorry, guys, I'm just gonna. Oh, that light seems to be streaming in. Is that a bit off putting? Got it. Sorry about that, people. I was just trying to get the glare off the 
guitar the sun's moved around a bit uh yeah so the nails yes neil i'm definitely using my nails actually that's a good question now that i'm now that i'm thinking about it um i use my nails nearly exclusively in that I'm not really using much flesh at all Samal, what are my top songs to practice tremolo? Etude number seven, opus 60, Karakasi. I know you. Uh, most people are probably already doing Requeros, and hey, I'm not going to tell you not to, but if you haven't started that, go to Etude number seven, opus 60, Karakasi. Indra Heath, dude, thanks for popping in, man. Have a good day at work. Mason, I see some guitarists have talent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Ooh, I know what you mean, bro. Talons, yeah, like uh, Judas L. Peroy, for example. And, uh, oh, man, there was a French dude. Man, I can't quite remember his name. It'll probably come to me later. Fuck, I don't even know how they can play like that, man. The nails are like... Actually, I don't even know how they can get through life like that with the nails that long. Uh, but they do. And uh, each to their own, you know. Everybody, Everybody's unique. And you've just got to play so much and so often and experiment. Uh, there's no... Actually, there's no right and wrong way to do your nails. It's all about you. And how, you know, and how you play, your physiology, how your hand is, how your fingers are, all of these things. That's why I might tell you something about your nails and, and you know, you'll try it and then like, oh, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Uh, that's because I'm not you. And uh, there are some things that, that are universal, like relax when you play. Try to make all your notes sound even. Try to make all your notes the same distance apart. That's universal. But something like the shape of your fingernails, for example, is not, that's not universal. Everyone's slightly different from everybody else. So you just got to get on there, play around, and find something that works for you. Boomer. Mason, that's a really good point, dude. Yeah, a lot of women do. Uh, yeah, I guess I have to take that back. I don't know how the women get through life like that either. <clears throat> Boomer, just learned the tremolo, struggling with the timing. What do you mean, man? Let's, you know, you, let's articulate that question. What do you mean you're struggling with the timing? If we look at uh, Recuerdos, for example... One and two and three and one two and three. Okay, Boomer. So you've just joined. Um, I'm I'll, I'm going to explain a little bit, but I'll also um, talk a little bit about sound. Uh, I went through quite a bit earlier in in the stream about sound, and my belief is that tremolo is best discovered or your errors or lack of technique let's say that lack of technique and tremolo will best be discovered by your ear um, so you need to listen really closely so i'm going to give you an example of what a lot of lot of students their tremolo sounds something like this i'll, I'll do that with the recorders or it could sound like this. Or something like... It, it's, um, it's not balanced, timing-wise. So that usually, main problems with tremolo occur between the thumb and the annular finger. 
these three seem to work fine. So you're always going to get that. But it, but it, but it, but it, but it. That seems to work pretty well for. Oh, I'm going to say it. Ninety for a hundred percent of people, usually that's fine. Did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it. The gap occurs, or the problems usually occur between thumb and annular. So this is a common problem. So there, there's a the gap is too big between when the thumb plays and when the annular finger plays. So what we want to practice there is rushing those two then, like that. And we're going to accent that note that is too slow. And then when I smooth it out, I've taken away the accent and the gap is gone. Yeah, and some, what's the other gap? Sometimes uh, it's just a matter of listening. If one of your fingers is a little stubborn, let's just say your index finger is always crappy. It's sort of going through and it's, you don't hear it or something. Or it could be any of your fingers. Accent that finger. So let's say, for example, I've got a weak middle finger. Let's say my middle finger is never behaving properly. And, uh, yeah, it's just not. So what I'm going to do when I'm doing my tremolo, I might make that middle finger a bit louder, like this. So P-I-M-A, P-I-M-A. And that... What that accent is doing, it's making me think of that finger every time I play it. With tremolo, because everything's just rolling around, sometimes you don't even know which finger you're using sometimes. So you can slow it down and accent that troublesome finger. If it was the index finger, it would be something like this. And just because I'm accenting doesn't mean I've got any excuse do this with my hand. So keep your hand steady. Interestingly, hardly anybody has trouble with the volume of the thumb. It's big and it's strong. It's often, it's too strong. So what you do, make sure, like I said before, everything is just nice and smooth. And then even that sort of thing. Let's remember that tremolo is really trying to copy the sustain of the human voice or violin or the stringed instruments, cello, viola, double bass. Their notes never run out. You know, they can bow them constantly and make that note last. That's really what tremolo is. It's an illusion. We're trying to set up the idea that these notes never end. As you all know, as soon as the guitar note is played, it's dying away. It's not like a human voice. We can make it stronger, you know. We can, you know, it gets stronger. Well, if we wanted to, we can make the same note get stronger and stronger and stronger. Guitar doesn't do that. It doesn't behave that way. As soon as it's played, it's dying. And so to, to give the impression that this melody never stops, never never dies away or never fades, the tremolo was invented. So it's constant, la, la, la. Okay. Uh, 
meal, is it? The staccato thing you just uh, you, you just is helping me already, man. That's what the whole lesson's about, eh? It's about making sure that you guys maybe you know, hear it from me. By the way, while I'm at it, another mean guitar player, his name's Brendan Aker. You guys might know him. I personally think he has the best hair on all of YouTube. Apart from having the best hair on all of YouTube, he's got an amazing guitar channel. Uh, so well worth checking out. And he just uploaded a tremolo video, instructional video today, Brandon Aker. Yeah, and uh, I watched it. It was awesome. And he, he put a lot of time and effort. The video's beautifully filmed. Not rugged like in the kitchen of my caravan. Yeah, he's got a nice looking studio and beautiful lighting and the chords pop up. And that was great. Loved. Samael says, loved your comp team during Otre Ete lesson. Have you tried to use tremolo in the final pattern of the song? No. No, I haven't. Actually, you know what? To be honest, I haven't even revisited that song since I uploaded it maybe three years ago. Yeah, Mason, I know. <coughs> His Theorbo videos, right? And that $275,000 old school guitar that he was playing. Yeah, but he's recently started doing tutorials, man. And they're good. Yeah, beautifully filmed, I've got to say. And, of course, he's a wonderful player. So, uh, yeah, well worth checking out, people. Go and check out his channel. <laughs> Any other questions out there? Well, we read it. There are some little trilly bits in Recuerdos, like here. There. <laughs> I hope he shouts me out. Yeah, me too. Hey, that'll be cool. We're the total opposite. He's got m heaps of hair, and I have none. Yeah, so uh, back to this. Uh, where, where was I? Yeah, so there's a couple of trills in the recuerdos, like there. So for those, I use uh, M I. So yeah, M I pull uh, hammer on and then pull off. Yeah, so just make sure that you're getting those nice and clear. Yeah. So make sure you're getting those good. Ah. Just see that and then I stuff it up. Beta, man. The last time I heard that name was a friend of mine in Bahrain. Good dude, drunk a lot of alcohol. Beta is asking, what easy pieces we can play using tremolo in order to master it? Uh, oh, I think easy and tremolo in the same sentence. <laughs> Sorry, man, it's not going to work. Yeah, tremolo in it, just by its nature, is, is not so easy. Uh, yeah, sorry about that, Beta. 
Uh, but I have said mentioned earlier, Etude Number Seven. There's a link. Oh, I've got it on my channel. Etude Number Seven, Opus Sixty, Karakasi. That one. Oh, my hair fell out. I ended up looking like uh, the McDonald's Golden Arches, so I shaved it all off. Uh, I do use Pinky C, but I don't use it in tremolo. Uh, I only use it if I'm doing the last squiddle. Of course, in chords. I'm using my pinky there. I used to play Asturias with my pinky like this. I think I can still do it. Yeah. Yeah, that's all my that's my pinky I'm using there. Index and pinky. Anyway, that's enough of that. But yeah, so I do use my pinky, but I don't use it in flaming uh sorry, I don't use my pinky in tremolo. Ah, oh, Lasquero. I guess you're using Lasquero. It must be. That's flamenco strumming, pretty much. Uh, for doing triplets, I actually use Paco Pena's triplet style, this. Which is just up with the thumb, down with the C, and then I. Yeah, so, um, yeah, that's uh, probably most of the tips I can give for tremolo. Yeah, so I think, um, actually, people, I'm going to end it there. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in to this live stream. It's been wonderful catching up with some very familiar faces and meeting a few more of you. Uh, you know, feel free to watch this video, share it, uh, let everybody know, give me a shout out wherever you are. And uh, as you know, everybody, let your fingers fly, play well. <laughs>